This technicality episode is brought to you by Brilliant.org. I've got a question for you. What do you think of when you think of humanity's switch to agriculture? What do you think of when early humans switched from a hunting and gathering lifestyle to a farming lifestyle? What about the people who existed before agriculture? What were they like? I know what I think. I've personally always looked at the switch from hunting and gathering to farming as the place in human history where we well, got our act together and started modernizing. The people before us, they were just savage hunter-gatherers. In school, we're taught that the Neolithic Revolution, the switch to agriculture, was one of the best things to happen to us because it allowed for specialization and put us on track for the big cities and modern lifestyle we have today. But what if I told you it was actually a disaster and in fact a massive mistake? Hey guys, I'm here, let's get technical. You probably know who Jared Diamond is, or at the very least, you've heard of his Pulitzer Prize winning book, Guns, Germs, and Steel. But we're not gonna talk about that today. Today we're gonna talk about this article from the May 1987 issue of Discover Magazine. Written by Diamond himself, it's titled The Worst Mistake in the History of the Human Race. And if you haven't guessed already, it's about agriculture. In his book, The Phenomenology of Spirit, German philosopher Georg Hegel argues that progress is never linear, and that what we may think of now as the epitome of human innovation and the past is simply primitive, we can actually learn a lot of lessons from the past that have been lost in the modern day. So today, let's learn those lessons. Let's discuss what Diamond argues we can learn from hunting and gathering that has been lost in the modern day, and see if agriculture really is the worst mistake in the history of the human race. Let's go. Wait, 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 no. There are so many benefits to agriculture. After adopting agriculture, people were just clearly better off. Really? Why? They were healthier, they had a constant food supply. Okay, let's debunk that. First, agrarians actually had more illnesses than hunter-gatherers. The study of prehistoric diseases and afflictions is called paleopathology, and paleopathologists mainly study skeletons to learn more about these things. This is George Amalagos, and he and his team at the University of Massachusetts studied 800 Native American skeletons at Dixon Mounds, located at the intersections of the Spoon and Illinois rivers. They wanted to look for changes in health that occurred when Native Americans there switched from hunting and gathering to farming corn around 1150 CE. What did they learn? The farmers were riddled with problems. There was an increase in degenerative conditions of the spine, signifying too much strenuous physical labor, a four times increase in iron deficiency anemia, a three times increase in bone lesions, signifying a plethora of infectious diseases, and a 50% increase in enamel defects, signifying malnutrition. Second, the life expectancy of hunter-gatherers was longer than agriculturalists. Armologos found that the life expectancy at birth of the hunter-gatherers was around 26 years. However, after the switch to agriculture, it dropped to 19, a decrease of over 25%. And third, hunter-gatherers were taller than their farming counterparts. Just like how we can use skeletons to determine health, we can also use them to determine height. When paleopathologists studied Greek and Turkish skeletons, they found that the average height of hunter-gatherers was 5 feet 9 inches for men and 5 feet 5 inches for women. However, upon taking up agriculture, height crashed to 5 feet 3 inches for men and 5 feet for women. That's a half a foot drop in men and a 5 inch drop in women. I will now demonstrate what that looks like. Average height, by the way, is a fairly good measurement of overall health, since a variety of health problems, notably malnutrition, have a pretty big impact on it. And of course, it's important to consider malnutrition when you're talking about, well, what system of getting food is the best. Okay, agriculture is bad for health, but why? I live in an agricultural society and I'm healthy. Come on. Come on, man. Who are we kidding? Yeah, that's fair. Uh, this is not a joke, but one day last week, I literally ate chocolate chip pancakes for breakfast chocolate chip pancakes for lunch, and chocolate chip pancakes for dinner. So, well, that fact is incredibly depressing. It segues me nicely into my next point. There are three reasons why agriculture is bad for health. First, all of that starch. With the rise of farming, we also saw the rise of starchy crops, wheat, rice, and corn. Now that in and of itself isn't necessarily bad, but when that's the only or primary thing you eat, say if you were to live in a farming society that only or primarily made those foods, you'd miss out on many amino acids, vitamins, and nutrients that are incredibly beneficial. Why were starchy crops so dominant? Well, they were practical. Not only were they easy to mass produce and had the most calories possible, they were also easy to tax. They weren't buried underground like potatoes, which would be hard to tax because each individual crop would have to be dug up and counted, and there was a consistent time when they were ripe, unlike, say, legumes. James C. Scott, political scientist, anthropologist, and author of Against the Grain, A Deep History of the Early Estates, calls grains, quote, visible, divisible, accessible, storable, transportable, and rationable, and they were really the only crops with those characteristics. Perfect for taxation, my dudes. Conversely, the diet of hunter-gatherers is incredibly 
diverse and healthy. They've got a wide variety of wild plants and animals to eat. A matter of fact, the Kalahari Bushmen, modern day hunter gatherers, get 2,140 calories and 93 grams of protein daily. When asked why the tribe didn't switch to farming, much like their neighbors, one Bushman said, quote, why should we, when there are so many mongongo nuts in the world? Second, if you're dependent on a certain crop and that crop fails, then you've got starvation on your hands. And we've seen this before. Does the Irish potato famine ring a bell? Third, agriculture encourages people to join together in big cities. After all, you do want to be where the food is. However, big cities means diseases, and lots of them, and spreading very quickly and death. In a hunting and gathering society, epidemics aren't really a thing. They can't really find their footing. After all, small, isolated tribes don't allow for diseases to spread too easily. However, once we saw the rise of farming and cities and domesticated animals, we also saw the rise of tuberculosis and measles and the most infamous of them all, the bubonic plague. But Alex, you have zero IQ. You're missing the entire point of agriculture. It allows for specialization. Not everyone has to find food so they can spend time working on their life's passion and contribute to society in new and amazing ways. Not to mention, and agriculture allows for leisure time, and the budding of art, and culture, and humanity, and anime. And sure, yeah, health suffers a bit and you've got more diseases, but that specialization in anime makes it all worth it. <laughs> How do you think hunting and gathering works? Well, uh, you spend your days out, out, out in the world, and you're hunting for meat, and you're gathering for uh, berries, and then at the end of the day, you, you come back, and you enjoy your rations, and then you go to bed and you do it again tomorrow and you're all hunky-dory. Hunters and gatherers actually spend less time per day hunting and gathering than you might think. Howard Spodek, professor of history and geography at Temple University, wrote in his book, The World's History, that hunter-gatherers would only need to devote an average of 800 to 1,000 hours a year to hunting and gathering. This is opposed to the 1,000 to 1,300 hours a year farmers spend farming. Let's put that into perspective. 800 to 1,000 hours a year is around 2.2 to 2.75 hours a day. To claim that you wouldn't have time for specialization in a hunting and gathering society society, or specialization only exists under an agricultural system, is simply incorrect. Even if you wanted to stay confined to an 8-hour, 9-to-5 workday, you'd only spend a third of your time actually getting food, while the other two-thirds could be spent on however you think you could best contribute to society. Under a hunting and gathering society, people have plenty of time to specialize in whatever area they desire. Also, the claim that farming caused art and music and culture because it allowed for leisure time is preposterous. Those things existed before agriculture, usually in the form of paintings and sculptures, and there's no reason why the practice of those things are exclusive to an agrarian society. Heck, anthropologists have found that hunter-gatherers spend more time on art and culture than agrarians. Ugh, fine, at least agriculture can't get any worse. Actually, it can! You know, you shouldn't be so happy saying that. Yeah, okay. With agriculture comes deep class divisions. And we all know this, right? We've all seen the Bill Wirtz video. That means if you own the farm, you own a lot of food, which is something everybody needs to survive. So that makes you king. Bill's right. Because agriculture has stored food and concentrated sources of food, like farms, whoever controls that food, regardless of if they produce it, a matter of fact, they're probably not the ones producing it, has all the power. Thus, social classes. And social classes have negative effects on people at the bottom of the pyramid. Greek skeletons found at Mycenae, an archaeological site southwest of Athens, reveal that lower class people were two to three inches shorter than royals, and had an average of six cavities or missing teeth, as opposed to royals who only had one. Chilean skeletons revealed that lower classes had four times more bone lesions caused by disease than royals. Not to mention, with societal classes comes oppression and slavery, something you can't have if everyone has to collect food for themselves every day. Okay, but Alex, there's got to be some advantage to agriculture. Why do we even switch in the first place? Well, it's efficient and easy, and we can make a ton of food and have massive surpluses through farming. We'll get more food in an acre of crops than in an acre of roots and berries and bushes. As the population of early humans began to spike, they needed a system where they could mass produce as much food as possible regardless of the consequences. So what do I think? Was agriculture the worst mistake in the history of the human race? Eh, probably not. Agriculture does allow us to have the massive populations we have today. It allows us to have cities and a global society. To say agriculture is nothing but terrible is an over-exaggeration. Yeah, you know what over-exaggeration is called on YouTube? Clickbait. No, 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 this is, this is different. Somehow. For better or for worse, our ancestors, thousands of years ago, made this decision which got us to where we are today. And it's important to look critically at the decisions our ancestors made so we can find out more about who we are as a species and reflect upon and investigate the choices we made in our past. While agriculture does allow us to gain many benefits, it doesn't come without costs. Those costs mean stuff like health, malnutrition, some free time, and class division. And investigating these costs, I think, is really interesting. You know, I first read this article almost two years ago now, at the beginning of my freshman year in high school. I read it in my history class, 
My teacher, Dan, shout out to him, he's a great guy, assigned it and it stuck with me ever since. The article, and I know this sounds kind of cliche, made me question everything. When I learned something I perceived as just a fundamentally great stepping stone in humanity, something I've been taught all my life in school was the point when humanity actually started getting good, had disadvantages as well, and encouraged me to look critically at everything I just accepted as fact, and never stop seeking truth. And it's this principle of sparking questions that draws me to Brilliant.org. By looking critically at what I'm learning, I'm asking questions to truly understand these concepts. For example, quick question, how do you think refrigerators work? I always thought it was this magical box of cool that would just pump cold air in and keep my food happy, healthy, and strong. However, I learned that it actually works not by pumping cold air in, nor by pumping hot air out, but by pumping heat out. I learned that from the physics of the everyday course on Brilliant.org, the best place to learn how to think like a scientist. They have tons of incredibly interesting courses that engage you in solving fascinating problems and help you understand understand concepts at a deeper level. If you want to get access to the course Physics of the Everyday and tons more courses in science, math, and computer science and help support the channel, go to brilliant.org slash technicality and sign up for free today. Also, if you use that link, the first 200 people will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. This video is part of a collaboration I did with the channel Counter Arguments. I made a video over on his channel debunking the myth that violent video games cause mass shootings. I'm a big fan of his channel and I was honored that I got to work with him. So if you haven't checked it out yet, I recommend you do. Click that I or the upcoming end card. Also, I'm gonna be at VidCon this week. I'm crazy excited, and uh, if you see me, feel free to come up and say hi. Like I said before, this video is an adaptation of Jared Diamond's article, The Worst Mistake in the History of the Human Race, which I'll leave in the description along with all the other sources if you wanna check them out. If you're new here, subscribe to see more, and liking and sharing the video helps and means a lot. Thank you to all my patrons over at patreon.com slash technicality, especially these awesome people, and as always, thanks for watching, DFTBA, and explore on.